premenstrual syndrome, or PMS, is the topic. And PMS is uh, quite common. Uh, about 20 to 50% of women of reproductive age can uh, experience this. And in a small percentage of uh, females, you can get PMDD, which is sort of the severe form of PMS, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. In terms of etiology, why does this occur? Well, there are certain uh, electrolyte imbalances that can contribute, such as having a decreased glucose or decreased magnesium or even decreased calcium levels. But for sure, there's endocrine factors that are very uh, commonly associated with the etiology, such as an increased prolactin level, fluctuations in estrogen and progesterone are very big part of the etiology and that's where a lot of the treatment is targeted towards and also other uh, hormones such as increased aldosterone and adh can result in fluid retention and decreased serotonin can result in depression so what are the symptoms approximately seven to ten days before menses a woman can experience any of the following. We have irritability. There is also anxiety, a feeling of agitation, anger, difficulty sleeping, insomnia. Of course, I discussed depression. That can also be a big part of it. Fatigue increased appetite. These are some of the key uh, symptoms that uh, are involved in PMS. In terms of a physical exam or, or uh, findings on physical exam, a woman can experience fluid retention because some of those hormones I mentioned, that can lead to swelling, edema, bloating, and also um, breast tenderness and breast uh, pain can sometimes be part of the symptomatology. Now let's talk a little bit about the symptomatology of severe PMS, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. This is, of course, a severe or extreme type of uh, PMS, which happens in about 5% of women, and it involves a very uh, depressed mood to the point where the woman is tearful, and even sometimes suicidal. And this uh, is actually very distressing and disabling with regard to day-to-day -day functionality. In terms of diagnosis, really it's just a clinical diagnosis based on history and physical exam. There's no lab tests that are required. And in terms of treatment, Treatment of PMS is quite difficult. It really varies from woman to woman as regard to what is effective. But here are some of the more common methods to uh, dealing with PMS. The first is if a woman is experiencing depression, SSRIs, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, are medications that are commonly used. Now, the biggest one by far in terms of effectiveness and prescriptions is oral contraceptive pills. These are combinations of estrogen and progesterone, either estrogen mixed with progesterone or sometimes one of those hormones by themselves. And what they do is they have this effect of flattening out the body's hormone levels. And what that does is that it makes it possible to not have any of these peaks and troughs that are responsible for the symptomatology of PMS. So keep the levels consistent, the hormone levels of estrogen, progesterone consistent in the body with these oral contraceptive pills. Sometimes, in addition to these uh, treatments, some nutritional supplements can help 
and one of the most common ones is vitamin B6. Vitamin B6, um, also known as pyridoxine, can be used. And about 50 milligrams a day is the general dosage, and it can be quite effective. And then one more thing I wanted to mention is that for the women who experience fluid retention, a diuretic can help remove some of that excess fluid. And one of those that's commonly used is spironolactone. So now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. 32-year-old single woman with no prior pregnancy presents to for her annual wellness exam. She reports recurrent symptoms of fatigue, abdominal bloating, breast tenderness, increased appetite, irritability that have occurred for many years, predominantly one week before the start of menses. Symptoms had improved when she was on oral contraceptive during her 20s, but recently have become more troublesome interfering with her interpersonal relationships and her ability to perform optimally at work as a research assistant. Her last menstrual period ended one week ago. Physical exam reveals normal findings with normal breast and pelvic exam. She does not meet clinical criteria for depression. Most likely diagnosis is. Well, giving you a lot of the key symptoms of PMS and the fact that they happen one week before menses and the fact that they have improved with OCPs really all points to PMS. And the question even tells you that she does not meet the criteria for depression, so that kind of uh, eliminates uh, B. The next question. A young woman comes to her PCP describing extreme irritability and conflicts with her boyfriend a week or so before her period. At times she also becomes tearful and depressed without a reason and cannot focus on what she is doing. She noticed that she starts overeating and craving chocolate and sweets. This used to happen occasionally, but it's happened each month for the past four months. Symptoms resolve with menses, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, again, this question sounds a lot like PMS, but there's a few words in here that make me think that it's a little bit more severe than that, like extreme or the fact that she has tearfulness. It's making me think that she's have a more she has a more severe form of PMS, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and that is choice E. And the fact that these symptoms resolve with menses makes it consistent that it's a premenstrual disorder. And finally, the last one: thirty-two-year-old female presents with complaints of moderate irritability and anxiety during week before nearly all of her menstrual periods. During this time, she also has problems with weight gain, breast tenderness. She says she is her usually happy self at other times during the month. You diagnose PMS, which of the following complementary and alternative therapies have been shown to be helpful in reducing symptoms of the problem. Well, we talked about uh, treatments such as SSRIs for depression, oral contraceptive pills, and certain nutritional supplements such as vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 is choice D.